This how-to video will show you how to set up the Hamilton T1 for a specific patient and start ventilation. You can follow exactly the same procedures if you are using a Hamilton C1 or Hamilton MR1 ventilator. You can set up ventilation in just a few steps. You should be able to complete the whole module in less than five minutes. Before you connect a new patient to the ventilator, make sure the right oxygen source is selected either high-pressure or low-pressure oxygen. To make sure there'll be enough power during ventilation, check the icons in the bottom right corner. The framed symbol shows you which source is currently being used. The green part of the battery symbol shows you how much the battery is charged. We recommend that the batteries are fully charged before you start ventilation. First, you need to select the right patient group and sex, and then you can specify the patient's height. Based on this information, the ventilator calculates the patient's ideal body weight. If you've already performed the preoperational checks, you don't need to do them again. The test results are stored in the ventilator's memory, even when it's turned off. Make sure that the setup you calibrated is not changed or altered while the ventilator is in storage. If you haven't already done the preoperational checks, you need to run them now. For a new patient, you can pre-configure the ventilator quickly just by touching a Quick Setup button. Each Quick Setup defines which ventilation mode should be used and all the settings that are relevant for that mode. For each of the patient groups, you can define three different default configurations. Of course, you can always modify any of the settings if you have to. Check the control settings and adjust them as needed. To review and adjust the alarms, touch the Alarms button, then the Alarm Control and adjust it as needed. To start ventilation, touch Start Ventilation. To change any of the control settings, simply select and adjust the setting. You can also touch controls to access all the available settings. Any change you make takes effect immediately. To enable or disable Psi, touch More. If you have to change the basic patient data for any reason, touch Patient and then adjust the settings as needed. You can also change the mode associated with the selected Quick Setup if you need to. Just select the mode you want and then confirm it. The Controls window will open, and you can review and adjust the control settings as needed. Then, touch Confirm to activate the new mode. After changing the ventilation mode, you should always check the alarm settings. To check the alarms and adjust them as needed, Touch the Alarms button, then select the Alarm Control and adjust it accordingly. To set alarm limits quickly, you can touch the Auto button. All the alarm limits, except for tidal volume and apnea, will automatically be set around the current monitoring parameter values. To stop ventilation, press the Power Standby key, then touch Activate Standby. The ventilator will enter standby mode, and the yellow counter then shows you how long it has been in standby for. To turn off the ventilator, press and hold the power standby key for about three seconds. It's best to keep the ventilator connected to its primary power source to maintain the battery charge and extend the battery's life. See the next video, How to Monitor a Ventilated Patient. This educational video does not replace the relevant instructions for use. Be sure to read the ventilator's operator's manual, as well as instructions for use that accompany the humidifier or other devices, breathing circuits, and other consumables. Pay particular attention to important safety and hygiene information.